Every single Destiny 1 raid has been talked about fully with regards to the encounters, loot, hard mode, most exotics involved in the raid, atmosphere, and more. Now, it's time we dive into a full-on ranking of them. Since nobody else is allowed to have an opinion except for me on the internet, whatever I say has to be right and we must agree with every opinion. All right, thanks, and enjoy raids ranked in order from worst to best. YouTube analytics tell me that a small percentage of people that are watching these videos are subscribed to the channel. So consider subscribing since it's free, and if you want to unsubscribe, you can always do that later. Thanks and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honestly shocked with what I'm about to tell you. I found an internet browser that I actually really like without it eating away RAM because it has a feature called the GX control where you can choose how much RAM you want to use and without it being slow because it has a network limiter so you can choose how much bandwidth you're using while watching streams or browsing. I'll spill the beans now, but I want you to meet Opera GX. A browser for gamer, and I am gamer. So this browser is for me and you. Opera gives you exactly what I wanted in an internet browser because it gives you freedom and nuance, man. This browser lets you customize the colors of your tabs, wallpapers, etc. It has a sidebar integration with Twitch and Discord, and I even really like it when I wanna watch somebody stream because I can see which game they're playing in a small picture when I look at their logo. Simple, easy, nice. Opera has GX Corner, which you can stay up to date on the latest gaming news and deals, where they handpick the best free-to-play games and add them to their calendar. Now, there's tons more that I could go over for this video, but I want you to check it out yourself. So if any of this interests you, just know it's free, and that link will be in the description. Also, for mobile users, you can still click the link in the description. Just fill out an email form so they can send you a proper link. Also, you guys should definitely join Opera's Discord, where they host bi-weekly giveaways all the time in there, so the link will be in the description. Come join me. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening, and enjoy the video. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music, too. We have four raids in Destiny 1, with each of them offering different difficulties from normal to hard, with challenges in them. These raids are all characteristically different from each other, and as a result can somewhat offer a wide spectrum of preference. I know my preferences of which raid I like more has changed so much over the years, and maybe after watching this video, yours will too. I will be grading each raid on multiple parameters with some bonus tiebreakers thrown into the mix. Starting off with loot, since this game is a looter shooter, loot will be weighed into the verdict. The next parameter is one that I believe is pretty subjective, but so is this whole list. So replayability is a huge factor. Raids are designed to be played every week for loot, so I want chasing that loot to be an enjoyable experience with some nuance every week. Another parameter for me is encounter and boss design. This doesn't necessarily mean more encounters equals better raid, but instead how these encounters allow nuance and freedom to justify their existence. Is it another played encounter, or is it involved with all six players? The final main parameter I was going to include was atmosphere, but I think each one of these raids offers a special form of atmosphere unique to itself, so I won't include that. But in its place, I will include the final main parameter of what I will call the differ from the norm encounter. This is a staple to Destiny's best raids, an encounter that is so different and holds a special place in everyone's heart. For example, Vault of Glass and the Gorgon's Maze stands out from the rest of the raid and is definitely unique there. Also, if it gets to the point of being so close that I can't decide on them, I am throwing in a bonus parameter of solo slash low man challenges to be the final decider since that offers extra reward for players that are seeking it, extra design in how you tackle the challenge and make that challenge differ from the norm applying to the raid as a whole instead of just one or two encounters. So the question you're probably asking is why trust what I have to say? Sure, I've spent way too much time making in-depth videos on the raids, 
but I also think you should trust me more because I make it an effort to get all my raids done each week and have done these raids so many times, even revisiting them after spending loads of time in Destiny 2. My picks have definitely changed over time, and maybe yours will too, but one that hasn't changed and is still the weakest in my eyes as the fourth best raid is... Crota? They're waking him! Crota's End is the shortest of all the raids and the only raid to ever come out the same day as the DLC in Destiny 1. Like I said in the Crota video, this raid was the result of development hell and has assets taken away from its original vision. Crota's End and King's Fall were um, one thing. Like they started off as like one mega concept that then we we had to like split and we had to shelve because the, the end of the game was about the Vex and, was, and I was like, the, the raid has to be about the Vex then too. So we had this big hive thing that we wanted to do. We, we like paused that and then um, built this, this whole new raid. Fogoth the Strike, King's Fall the Raid, all were supposed to be included in Crota's End. Or, well, I guess Crota's End was supposed to be included in King's Fall, but you get what I'm saying. This raid on a surface level sounds bad, but to me nails two parameters. The loot and the bonus parameter of Solo Challenge. The raid had some good encounters for the time, but has now had all of them done better and considering Crota has been reduced to almost every public event mechanic, I think this one is not a top dog on those fronts. But I do think this one is a great entry point for solo players, as this raid can be easily soloed with a little bit of effort. Its encounter that differs from the norm to me is the chase and the hellmouth at the beginning, and I still think that's my favorite part of the raid, but still not gonna save this one. The loot was solid for this one at the time and even had a staple to the game, Black Hammer, which has now been turned into two different exotics. The other loot at the time did introduce gear with proper perks and some weapons that even had what we'd call champion mods now with anti-barrier night rounds. I think the fact that Solo Crota is the most fun thing to do with this raid actually scores it some replayability points too. But let's not forget, this is also a six player activity, so it kind of loses out on some other points in encounter design, especially when every encounter can be cheesed in a pretty boring way. Overall though, this one falls flat to the others. So now this list is about to get a little bit more divisive and difficult from here. So leave me a comment if you agree or disagree with this next pick. Here we go, next raid up. Put down your pitchforks. I actually like this raid a lot, but it suffers from being the first. So yeah, I gotta talk a big game of smack here. I'll start with where it hits the parameters nicely though. The loot is by far the best loot we've ever received from the raid. Almost too good. Actually too good. Game breaking good. And the differ from the norm encounter is great, albeit a little short with Gorgons, depending if you have teammates that coordinate or not. All right, all right. First Maybe of a little all, bit he's, slower. He's looking up there. Hey, this route, sick. Maybe don't melee and make him look up here. <laughs> he's like, what was that? Nice Oops. wasting seven minutes. <laughs> he he's, turned around. he's actually coming back. <laughs> Hey. Damn it, I'm not host. Evan, if you melee him, <laughs> he's gonna. <laughs> can you please kick Evan from the game so I can get through the? <laughs> Evan's like, yeah, I want to get all these raids done, but I also want to spend four hours in the Gorgon's maze. My real issue here is more for people that play it every week, but not when it first came out. Let me explain. When this raid first came out, it was the primary way to level up. All the reward systems for max level were most optimized by coming to this raid, and the loot was damn good. But I think that made us forget how much of a pain some of these encounters were, because if you were to ask returning players to the Vaults of Glass in Age of Triumph, they probably played it a few times and left it alone because the encounters are boring. First one, open the spire, plates. Second one, Literally every vanilla Destiny mission, 
defend tower thing. But this time, instead of a couple of minutes defending the tower thing, this one lasts up to 15 minutes and has no reward for doing it. Next one, shoot yellow light things to get chance for good loot at the end, or just cheese it from a distance for seven rounds? Okay. Who hurt you, Luke? Tell me, who hurt you? Everything after these first three encounters is pretty good, but these drag this raid out hard. Remember when I said more encounters don't necessarily mean better? Yeah, I'm talking about this one. Replayability wise, if most players LFG'd to skip the first two or three encounters, I don't see a lot of replayability. Also, player freedom and nuance was here, but 99% of that was through cheesing the bosses off the map or sitting up high with icebreakers. Replayability may have been saved from the loot though. Also, this one loses on the low man side of things with Atheon only being able to be soloed up until Rise of Iron, making the fights not really win any bonus points. Loot in a solid second half saved this one hard. Dance! Dance with so you thought that one was divisive? <sighs> Here we go. Next up. <laughs> yep, this one. So, King's Fall is... King's Fall is still a solid raid, but since we said nice things about Vault of Glass first, let me say mean things about King's Fall this time. I think King's Fall parallels Vault of Glass in a way. Bad loot to Vault's great loot, and the second half is bad while Vault's first is bad. King's Fall has boring mechanics for everyone except for one or two players. Everyone else stands on plates while this dude is in Ghost Town. That was a ghost town. King's Fall also offers bad loot compared to the rest of the raids. I know there's some things that are good here, but nothing outside a touch of malice and maybe Squilliam Fancy Sun's Furnace that we're hot on. This hurts it replayability wise, doesn't it? Well, sort of, but not fully. We're gonna bridge good and bad now. The replayability I find in the downtime sections like the ship jumping puzzle, the <laughs> walls, Golgoroth, even Warpriest with shotguns, because these allow you to tackle the raid how you want to in a kind of intended way with some cheese in there, but not boring cheese, cool cheese like a smoked Gouda baked into a toasted baguette. I also think I gotta give credit to Bungie for nailing that differ from the norm encounter with Golgoroth sharing no mechanics from the rest of the raid and being the first real close combat for six players instead of one like Crota in the game, especially if you do it the intended way. This raid is also more of a gauntlet and narrow raid than any we have ever truly seen. So credit where it's due. I think the replayability being saved by the differ from the norm encounter is great, and low man wise, there are some challenges to be found, and we may cover how solo oryx came to be one day. I just think if the loot was better, and there was less plate mechanics for the rest of the team, not making oryx have to be four phased, etc., this one would be better. Finally, I think this one was hurt by being the only raid we had for an entire year. The only time that happened in Destiny 1, because Age of Triumph kind of re-released the other raids. Over time, my picks between this and Vault of Glass have flip-flopped, and you may now see why I think they parallel each other. I see why people love this raid, and I hope you see why I like it, but don't love it. So hopefully that squared away why I put King's Fall as the second best and not the best. And Vault of Glass is the third best, but not the best. I think we could all agree on Crota. I think the comment section is on fire because of King's Fall and Vault of Glass being worse than our final raid. And the raid that I believe is the best of the bunch. We don't need that. They know. Wrath of the Machine. The final one. The one that tied the knot on Destiny and the one that really cemented itself as the best for hitting every parameter I set well, with some parameters even being hit the best. This raid just doesn't do anything bad. That's it, roll credits.
Mmm. Okay. One thing I can ding it for is making me want more. The raid is kind of short compared to the other raids outside of Crota, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. So let's just go over the main meat, right? The loot. I think this is the correct direction. Not broken good, but better than the rest with some extra perks to top off what we had on the other weapons in the game. Pretty neat. Encounter design. All six players play the same roles really, moving around and helping out beat the encounters. This went from sit and watch one person doing everything and to wake up and do it. Replayability. I mean, like I said, there isn't one bad encounter here and everyone has to come to the plate. Wait, not plate. Everyone has to come to the ball and play for a successful completion. And there's a lot of variety on how the encounters get done from far away killing bosses to up close and personal, mid range, you name it, you can do it. This raid lends to providing a skill curve and freedom to where you can progressively get better over time, instead of being forced to do the encounters in the game's set amount. The differ from the norm encounter I think wins here above all others, and that is the siege engine providing what I can only call Bungie binging a bunch of Mad Max movies to repair the full engine and duke it out with some gnarly guitar riffs. The bonus parameter which I believe this raid fits the second best to Crota is low man challenges. This raid just had a challenge thought to be impossible completed not too long ago but the other challenges are a spectacle too with Siege Engine and Axis. Seriously, go watch those, they're great. So yeah, that's basically my list. And I know this video is shorter than the other videos, but I've already talked about each of these raids for over four hours combined. So cut me some slack here. I know some of you are gonna be disappointed. I know some of you are gonna be happy. I know some of you just don't really care because you either didn't play the raids or you just don't care. You're just here because there's nothing else to do in Destiny right now. Whatever it is, if you want to come yell at me for my takes, talk to me about Destiny, talk to me about games in general, come by my Twitch at EvanF1997 where we talk about video ideas there and we do crazy things with other streamer buddies there too. Either way, come by. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm there a lot. And once again, I want to lend a big thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please go check them out. Anyways, that is my list. I'm taking a break from Destiny 1 raid videos for now and... <laughs> Destiny 2 raids. Okay. We got a lot of work to do. I'll see you later. Hmm. Means to an end is not worth doing this week. I mean, I'll still do it, but it was said that you don't get nothing. Have more pieces. Kill me. Let me have it. Let me have it. Let me make it happen. Yo! Sup, motherfucker? Hey! No! No, we win, bro. I'm better. No. <laughs> Chad, is there a void that's been left in your heart because you have nothing to look forward to because of if so, might I suggest buying shit?